Hey everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm joined by a super awesome guest. Um, he is a comic book cover artist. Uh, you've seen his work on DVD covers, uh, comic book covers, action figure packaging, uh, and convention brochures. Um, David Nakayama, thank you for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. This will yeah. be fun. Yeah, um, so you're coming from all the way in Hawaii, is that right? That's right. Thank you for accommodating the hours apart. Where, where are you located? Uh, I'm in California. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, this isn't as uh, crazy as when I had to interview um, Stephanie Hans. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've heard of her. She's all the way in France. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I had to do some crazy math to figure that out. And that was not easy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's now I know. Thing about, one good thing what? about uh, pro art is you can be anywhere in the world. It's all electronic anyway, so why not? Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't. It, it's crazy because um, when I was talking to her, she was saying that she's more popular here than she is in France, like, hmm. which is interesting. Um, and that's really awesome that like, you know, Marvel and DC are, you know, they, they don't really hold, you know, where you're from or your location against you. It's like, you know, as long as you can get your work to them, it doesn't matter. Um, that's right. Did like Marvel approach you or did you like audition for covers with Marvel? How did you get that well, going? It, it's been a long journey, but uh, I'll try to keep it real quick. The um, I always wanted to do comics since I was, uh, you know, like 13 years old. I saw Jim Lee's Uncanny X-Men uh, mm -hmm. and it just blew me away. I didn't realize comics could look like that. It sort of simultaneously made me both a comics reader and uh, a wannabe artist. Yep. And uh, I just kept trying and trying and trying and, you know, seven years of school, a couple years internship. Uh, finally made my way into some some professional work and you know when it starts it's 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 low paying and it's uh it's not sure. really anything to write home about but it grows over time and uh fortunately I'm I'm finally kind of where a 13 year old me wanted to be <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? yeah yeah uh, many years have gone by to, to get to this point but I'm I am really lucky to be able to draw you know covers which is a really fun job and, and toy illustrations and you know, uh, I have the luxury. It's amazing. Thank you, art gods, for you know people. People come to me. I don't have to go seek out work anymore. I'm I'm actually more in a position yeah. to turn down things to make time for the things I do want to do. Yeah. Um, what What do you think is like the the piece of work that you've done that people or fans always come back to and say like, oh, I really loved this thing that you did. Is there like a particular piece of artwork that people hmm. just constantly you know rave about there are a few um there was a one that springs to mind is there was a variant cover with mary jane sort of dressing up as uh uh gwenpool that one used to be brought to me a lot when we had comic cons mm. ah um, i remember those <laughs> yeah in the before times but uh, we'll get back there someday sure sure looking forward to it that's one. Um, I did some uh, PS4 Spider-Man covers that seemed to be really yeah. well received. Yeah. Um, and an old classic. I happened to have done the DVD box art for um, X-Men the Animated Series yeah. a million years ago. And it was so weird because I had no career at the time. I was not known. I don't know why they even found me. It was like just a, you know, a, a gift from from out of the blue um but that one has been reused you know on disney plus now and anytime yeah. anybody writes an internet article about uncanny <laughs> about the x-men animated series they pull that art so it's right a, it's like a gift that keeps on giving <laughs> yeah it's like the um uh what is it like the go-to image whenever they talk about the show uh yeah. which is crazy and and i didn't realize that it was you like and I, I'll, I have a slideshow later on of like some of your work. We'll, we'll talk about those, but yeah, it, it's really weird that like I, I had already seen your work before, but I didn't know it was you. So that's always kind of fun to be like, oh, that's David. You wouldn't. I actually have it. I got it right here. But um, oh, sweet, <laughs> the DVD box. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I have, I have a little little shelf of my favorites, but. Uh, yes. This oh is my one. gosh. I don't think I've actually ever seen it like in real life. It's actually way cooler than the images because I didn't know it's like holographic or like I reflective. know. Like they, yeah, they, they put they money into that. They did. They, they, I've seen it sold this way, you know, with just the Correct. regular 
thing, but when it first came out, it just, I mean, this is, looks remarkable. I don't yeah. know if I've had a cooler looking product made, but, uh, no kidding. but uh, the hat, yeah, anyway, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's awesome. I think a lot of people buy that and then they keep the, the, co uh, the box cover and then sell the DVD, you know, like, <laughs> like that's what they do. Like on eBay, if you were to look that up, it would just be like the, um, just the case, but not the outer packaging. Um, cause I mean, why would you sell that? It's awesome. I love it. People tell me all the time, you know, like, uh, Hasbro does an amazing job on their boxes. They, mm -hmm. they, you know, they get professional, you know, real comic artists to come and do the yeah. side panel art. And it's not necessarily the first thing you see, you know, when it's hanging on the shelf, it's the toy first, but people then, you know, admire, take a minute to admire the box and they realize, Hey, this is unique art by like comic pros. Like, uh, I don't know if I really want to cut this off. Maybe, maybe I should right. keep the packaging. Maybe I should, you know, people tell me they, they make a collection of the packaging itself. So that's cool. Oh, that's interesting. I would be nervous to damage it. Cause I guess if you do open the, you know, when you pull the pl clear plastic from the cardboard, there's going to be some tearing. So I would be, I don't even know how they would do that. I guess they just leave it unopened, right? They're like, I bought it for the art, not for the figure. <laughs> True. Well, you know, they come in different formats. The thing you're talking about is the old format where it was a card Correct. and there's like a blister thing on the top. Um, most of them don't do that anymore. Now they kind of come in a box where the front has a uh, clear plastic and then you have yeah. to turn the box completely to the side. Hang on. <laughs> yes, I love this show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's more like this. Yeah, uh-huh, uh -huh. you don't You don't really see the art until you turn it to the side, but people right. tell me they like to keep these these little side panels. So Interesting. <laughs> but well, like, do they, do they just cut it out or they just they keep it intact like they they flatten it or something right like i'm uh, is that i don't know i don't collect figures like that i usually take them out and i toss the packaging away now i'm like i feel guilty about it um, <laughs> well but... i don't know to be honest they haven't told me how they keep it but i've been told many times that they like to keep the packaging somehow yeah yeah huh i'll have to ask about that that's interesting um what was the last convention that you've been to it, like in there person. goes my son. Yeah, Hi, <laughs> I'm like, there's someone in your room. <laughs> I'll edit that out. <laughs> you know, or it's funny. I don't know. But uh, what was the last convention? Yeah, that you I went, went in person. It would have been. Um, I think we squeezed in C2E2. I want to say yeah. in February. Um, and even at the time, it felt dicey. It felt like, oh, there's this, uh, there's this thing yeah, coming. It was looming, right? Like, yeah, that was, yeah. I forgot that was that was February, but yeah, things didn't really like get serious till March. That was that was like the uh, man, yeah, February. That I forgot about that. I, um, um, I, it turned out to be perfect timing because it was the last big show of the year. So yeah. grateful I got to actually go to it and you know keep the the time between shows to a minimum. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what what conventions do you normally go to throughout the year? Like, what, are there certain ones that you try to make? time for yeah, I always try to do New York Comic Con for sure uh -huh. and then a mix of some other things in between so this year would have been um we would have done Boston and uh, mm -hmm. uh I want to say Dallas uh there, there were about four shows that I had on my calendar that I was looking forward to and yeah it just wasn't meant to be so someday are there um are there ones in Hawaii like are there con I mean I, I, there's only one convention I've heard of in Hawaii um, mm -hmm. But are there normally other ones there too? I mean, I'm sure there are, but uh... yeah, there are. Um, there are two here in Honolulu. There's the amazing one. Um, maybe that's one you think mm. you, yeah. you've heard of. Stanley yeah. famously one of the first ones, so that one's pretty well known. And then there's another good one here called the I want to say the Honolulu Comic Convention. Anyway, another uh, sort of equally large one that happens um, uh, as well. And then the Big Island has its own Comic Con. Kauai has its a uh, Comic Con. Maui has a Comic Con. Um, okay. They're small. They're small, but they're um, they're very nice. I've done the the Hawaii Big Island one for sure and enjoyed yeah. that. So was looking forward to doing that again. But I'm showing you this because this is actually the first um, piece of your work that I ever saw of yours that no I was like, I like this style, and I I think I like <laughs> just like the humor in it like it was just really clever and really funny um Thank and you. then i actually was really disappointed when i found out this was um exclusively for 
the uh what's the tampa bay comic-con um yeah uh what um brochure poster. yes it's yes a, the poster yeah and i was like oh like can this like i was i'm still hoping that this this image shows up on a comic book somewhere um but yeah i was yeah. just like oh why couldn't it be <laughs> not on a poster but yeah no i i was just like i really liked it and then then find out that you've done a ton of other stuff was like really great um can you talk about this image a little bit sure thanks um I, uh, you know, they, they're the company that puts on these shows, not just Tampa, but I think they have a San Francisco one and a few others. Um, their little trademark is that they, they create an exclusive poster for the event. Uh, and it's, you know, they have tons of them, you know, when you as the, as the fan appear at the show, you can grab a bunch for yourself, but it's only available at that show. And it's often like a really well-known artist and, uh, just, a a very cool collectible. I, I like that they did it. I had a good time um, making this one. It was quite fun to get this giant movie sized poster of it as well. Um, but how did it come about? I, I don't remember who had the idea to to uh, blatantly rip off Norman Rockwell. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's it, right. <laughs> it might have been them, it might have been me. I can't remember, it's been too long, but uh, mm -hmm. that's that's the idea is, you know, uh, you know everyone's seen the Norman Rockwell uh, self-portrait, you know, reproduced many, many different ways, or how many times have we seen Amazing Spider-Man 300, you know, redone. Oh, yeah. Totally. So many, so many times at this point, but this one we hadn't seen too many times. So, uh, it was fun to do an homage that isn't quite as common. Yeah. It's, it's really great. Like what, um, I guess, what was the process like, you know, um, you know, in, in like the design and the decision making, like to put his camera there, which I think is a Nikon, I'm not going to say because, uh, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like just little, little um, things like that, like what um, were these ideas that came to you right away as you were doing it? Or was it like uh, something that came at the last minute? Can you talk? Well, about I think that? when you're working with an homage, you, you have the, the bones of the thing set up for you, right? So you knew that it has to occupy the same space mm. as the Saturday evening post that this is based on. So that, that frame is already there and just transposing it to the Daily Bugle makes sense, right? Because you're in Spider-Man's world. Yeah, yeah. And instead of, instead of the woman waiting at the doctor's office or wherever she is in the original, it made sense to put him on the subway. Yeah. And, um, you know, so you just go one by one transposing the things that were in the original to things that fit Spidey's world I think the camera got dropped in there at the last minute just because it felt like there was an empty spot there. And I was like, what can I put there that would, mm. would make this more cool? And, and I, I think I just dropped that in real quick at the end. Um, but, you know, the, the sticker that says Tampa Bay is, is a great way of working in the Tampa Bay logo yeah. without it being just pasted on top. It's like in universe. And I like that about it. Yeah, yeah, it was actually really perfect. I think my favorite part was just the fact that he was on the subway because you almost never see <laughs> Spider-Man on the subway. Like if he's there, he's as Peter Parker, never as Spider-Man. So I think that was just like the funniest thing ever. Um, I, I like that too. And they, they did it again in the PS4 video game. One of the cutscenes that, you know, the loading screens rather when you when you fast travel has him on the subway in a bunch of different, you know, short clips. And it's, it's quite funny and very similar to this. Huh, I'll have to, to look that up. Um, yeah, as soon as you get the fast travel ability, that's that's how he does it. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Are you uh, are you a big gamer? Um, I do love games. Um, when I lived in California for about twelve years, it was to work in the games industry. So I've mm -hmm. I've uh, I've made a few video games and art directed a few video games. Um, these days, I'm I'm enjoying being freelance and drawing for all kinds of different things. But uh, I, I yes, I'm definitely a player. I love them. And I like working on them too. Yeah, I know we were talking about this earlier. Um, like, mm -hmm. it is, obviously, this is like the go-to image. Uh, and so I didn't, when I was, I guess, in the beginning, when I found out about your work, I was like, I wonder what else he's done. And then to find out that you also did this, I was mm -hmm. like, I, this <laughs> is the thing I was saying where I, I was like, I didn't realize I'd already seen your work like a long time ago, like years and years ago. So it was, it's yeah. kind of, funny to be like, I like that image and I didn't know why at the time, but then to find your, some more recent work and then to realize that I'd already liked it before. It's kind of like, like, that's why I like this, this, this art style or your work is just because I've, I've liked it before. So it's just really cool. 
Yeah, I'm proud yeah. of it. I, but I, I, do, I get that reaction a lot because it, it wasn't signed. It wasn't credited. You know, yeah, no yeah. one would necessarily know that it was even me. If you weren't following my, you know, very poorly uh, watched social media at the time, this is like before I had any comics under my belt, practically. So who would know, you know, like the 10 people that followed me on DeviantArt in whatever year this came out. Right, right. Well, it's crazy because, um, yeah, usually they they uh, choose art that already either exists, like it was created for something else and they're just repurposing it, right? Um, or they they choose like a super yeah. famous artist. Because, um, you know, I, you've probably seen this too, like they've had the Neil Adams image of like kind of right. the same setup, same group. Um, yep. And I've seen that used before, but this one, it's like, you know, you're like, who is this? Who who did it? And then, you know, because there's no signature, you're like, okay, maybe it was just like a, you know, a hodgepodge. Like maybe they just put it together at the last minute, but then to realize it was actually like a, a real artist, you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, <laughs> I love when people find out uh, that it was me. It's worth, it's worth posting from time to time. And, and I love seeing that reaction every time I do. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I mean, especially now that it's on like Disney Plus and like, for whatever reason, um, the creators of the show were like, there's a huge following of X-Men fans on Twitter, which is like the weirdest place to find fans. Um, oh yeah, I, I love X-Twitter. Uh, I follow all- <laughs> That's a good all, one. They, they call themselves X-Twitter and they are- oh, a, really? A tight yes, absolutely. Um, they, they are a tight knit group of people who are, you know, a lot of them make podcasts and just know X-Men so much better than the average civilian, <laughs> including myself. Oh, yeah. Um, so if if you can get the buy-in from them, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, it is funny to um, to see like the interactions and the conversations because they always talk about things that you don't even think about. And you're like, oh, that's a good point. Like, huh, that's so weird. Or like yeah. they point out like, oh, did you know that this character was in there? And you're like, no. And you Absolutely, know, yeah. like- you know, I, I watched the show when it was on TV and then I watched it again. So it's like, I, I'm pretty familiar, but it's like to constantly, like just like how many things there are about it that you, you know, are always finding out. It's like crazy. Um, totally. Yeah. yeah. For one, one example that just pops in my head is like, uh, there was this obscure lobster character who was in like a couple of issues of some X-Men spinoff book a million years ago. And the ex Twitter people were all about it. They loved it. They thought it was very interesting and exciting. And I think recently it turned up again in like a House of X ad. It got people all a buzz again. Like, why'd they bring back the lobster? Like, tell me more. And that's then, hilarious. And then it didn't show up again. But I didn't even notice that it was a lobster. Um, but to these guys, they know it so well. They're like, oh, I know exactly who that is. Like, where it already has a is. name, right? People have already given it a, a, a name. It, and you're like, it has a name that I forgot. It's like Bill or something like that. But, um, uh, yeah, that kind of thing. Like they, they just know it better than, than I do. <laughs> right. And right. I consider myself a pretty hardcore fan. <laughs> sure. Sure. You're actually somebody who's, who works with the, the, the brand. And then, you know, for you to still be like blown away is like, that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, it is. They know what they're talking about. They, they sure do. Um, X Twitter. I'm going to, I'm going to use that. That's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, sorry. So, I mean, uh, all right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. This is, this is for my friend. He's the one who's, who's like, he has all of these and he's, I think he's going <laughs> to, he has them all. Thank signed, you, I, believe. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Let me see. So I, yeah, I, I was just like, I can't pick one. I'm just going to take a screenshot of like, like <laughs> a tiny bit of your work. Um, what I guess, can you tell me a little bit about sort of um, wh what do you do when you are uh, doing a Marvel cover. Um, is there like a process you do where you try to either come up with something completely different or you try to, um, you know, stick to uh, a, a certain bucket or bubble of uh, what's been done for that particular character? Like, can you take me through sort of like your process when you're doing like um, covers for like characters like Deadpool or Spider-Man that have been like done forever? Yeah. Well, it, it's it's changed over time, and definitely the character makes all the difference. So, if you have Deadpool, which is a gift, uh, you're allowed to basically do anything and encouraged to to you know break what's expected. 
So, you know, I don't see it here necessarily, but there's this one where Deadpool is Captain America and there's like all this patriotic stuff lying around behind him, but it's, if you look closer, it's like rainbow unicorns and burritos and, you know, non sequitur things uh, to make it more Deadpool. And, and that would only work with Deadpool. It wouldn't, it wouldn't really make sense to do it with Captain America himself or Spider-Man. So Deadpool's a special case where you're allowed to be as zany as you possibly can be. And I like that. That's fun. If it's somebody else, you know, you kind of have to think of who the character is and what's going to work for them. But um, uh, recently I've decided that I, I, I just like making covers where there's something to it other than just the characters standing there looking cool. You know, if it, I, I kind of started to feel like if they're just posing, mm -hmm. that's cool, but everybody does that. That's not special. You know, that, that's, uh, that's just sort of the, the baseline, right? Like you look at every comic on the shelf and, you know, a character is striking a cool pose on literally every single cover. So what can I bring to the covers that is going, that is going to make it stand out above that? And then it comes down to, you know, is there some kind of level of humor or is there a meta commentary or is there sex appeal or, or all of the above? You know, what, what can I add to this cover that's going to make it more interesting or thematic in some way? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, especially these days, I'm, I'm really thinking about that. We, we just released, for example, a, um, a exclusive Strange Academy number four cover. I don't know if, that, if you have that one in your list coming up. I might, I might. Okay, well, uh, maybe I'll save the story for that, but uh, no, no, <laughs> that's yeah, a good example. Please. <laughs> oh, okay, well, in that case, the, <clears throat> the assignment was draw magic. <laughs> that's all I had to do, right? But we, you know, we're thinking, okay, well, this is Strange Academy, and she's a teacher, you know, what can I do with, with that theme? You know, definitely something that has not been touched before. I don't think on any cover, not even for Strange Academy, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But magic as a teacher, you know, we, we have a coffee mug that says Limbo's Best Teacher on it. Yeah, and she's I got the that. apple in her hand on fire. <laughs> awesome. You know, and, you know, you have this low angle that makes her look simultaneously like, <clears throat> you know, the queen of, of <laughs> the yeah. school, yeah. but also... You know, she's she's intimidating and aggressive, but also sexy and giving you a little smirk. Um, there's so much character being displayed there and all kinds of little jokes. That's what I'm talking about. Like there's you don't just look at it and go, cool pose, cool drawing, bro. You know, there's more to it. There's something to talk about it. And I think that's what makes a, a more compelling cover. How many, you know, usually when you are doing these covers, how do you know when it's it's done? Like, how would do you? Uh, is there like a aha moment when you reach that, like, that's, you know, this is a, like, it's done. Do you usually mm -hmm. have that? Or is it kind of like, you know, uh, a deadline where you're like, okay, this is as much as I can do in this amount of time. Or is it a mix of both? I, I don't usually cut things short on quality. What I usually end up doing is just working harder to get it done to the level of quality that I want for better or for worse. Um, the... I, I kind of, I'm looking at these covers, you know, as, as I go every step along the way and I go, I kind of ask myself, what sucks right now in this cover? You know, every step along the way, what, what part looks unfinished? What part needs more love? You know, um, and, and I just go until I get to the point where there's nothing else I can do. <laughs> you know, I've, mm. I've lit everything, I've textured everything. I, you know, I, I've, I've flipped the canvas back and forth to make sure the anatomy is working the way I want. Um, make sure the expressions are, are communicating what they're supposed to. And once it checks all those boxes, that's when I call it done. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. I always like to hear like the process because sometimes um, I've heard that, you know, uh, it, you know, the, the cover's done when the deadline is up. So I've heard that too, so always, <laughs> which is true. I totally agree. That's a good way to say, all right, this is a done cover. So how often do you get asked to do, I mean, I probably all the time, uh, sketches at conventions? right? And like, how long yes. does it take you to do it? And do you get like ridiculous requests? And you're like, no, can't do that. Can you just kind of <laughs> talk about that really quick? And the experience? Oh, wow. Yeah, for sure. Now, this is its own world of, of, of thinking. Um, yes, I get convention request or sketch requests all the time, literally every day. Um, 
and I have to turn people down basically every time because I can't do these when I'm trying to get covers done. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Too, it's too much of a distraction. I, I tried briefly and it just drove me completely mental. It hurt everything. Everything got worse trying I've to do two that. things at once. Yeah. yeah, so I just can't. I have to politely turn things down. I, I occasionally will make an exception for something like we did a, a series of four charity sketches for Hero a couple months back. Yeah, that was an exception. I, I'm not. I'm not going to be doing any sketches just at home, you know, for for random requests. Um, that being said, I love doing them at conventions. I feel like that's the main thing I'm there to do. Mm-hmm. You know, meet meet real people and give them a chance to to get a, a, a affordable hand drawn piece. Not everyone can afford a cover, you know. So yeah, I like yeah. to like to make these things very affordable. They're a fraction of the price of you know, a, a cover and I, I don't skimp on it. I, you know, I do the full color thing. Not everybody does that. Um, so during conventions, uh, I take a list and I do as many as I can. And, you know, uh, I don't, I usually get to, I have a pretty good sense of how long it's going to take. I'll do something like between three and five a day. And uh, although for some reason on the first day, usually much less, I'm usually pretty my brain's not working the first day for whatever yeah, yeah. from the tr- long travel or whatever it is. Um, anyway, I, I do about three or th- three to five a day. And so I make something between 15 and 20 people happy <laughs> over the oh. course of a three, three day weekend. And that's great. And uh, I, I have found that this is, you know, those numbers seem small, but I really think it's, it's important and effective. Like sometimes you'll do a sketch for someone and then they're a fan for life, you know, like they, yeah they feel really connected to you and, you know, they, they want to share your, your artistic journey. And, you know, suddenly you'll see after a show, you know, more people posting than used to your, your followers will, will tick up. And, and that's really surprising. I don't, I don't expect that, you know, you're, cause you're, you're only dealing with a small number of people, but I think what it is is it's a quality versus quantity kind of thing. Like when you interact with someone like a fan and you share a nice conversation about your favorite comic or movie and they walk away with a unique piece of art that they can have forever. I, I think that's going to be a, a very high quality fan, you know, a really interactive and engaged fan, um, not just like someone who randomly, you know, followed your page on Instagram or something like that. So, yeah, I think conventions are really important. I think doing sketches for people are really important, uh, and I really look forward to going back to conventions so we can start doing these again. It's sometimes it, you know, it can be fun to see your favorite artist draw you know, their most well-known character. That's cool. But it's also cool to give them something they've never drawn before. And now you have the only piece of art in the world of that character that that person has ever drawn. That's also cool. Right. So uh, the one thing I don't do is like, I I had to stop taking the sort of, you know, uh, draw my original character thing or draw something very obscure um, or... And I, I don't do like nudes or anything like that. There, there's a, there's a yeah, line yeah. of things I'm willing to do. I'll draw any popular famous character you want, but uh, I think the days where I'm doing people's original care creations is probably over. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's good to have, you know, uh, boundaries and just, you know, uh, restrictions. I don't think there's a problem with that. Um, but yeah, as a, as a fan, you get, you feel like you're involved, right? In the creation of the sketch. So that's cool. Yeah, that's really fun. Really unique. I, I don't I don't know of another industry that offers that kind of thing, right? Like you can't go to meet your favorite movie star and walk away with anything other than like a I guess they can sign a photo or something, but sure. a unique drawing. What where else can you do that? Like that's that's like comics alone can give you something like that. It's cool. Yeah, that's a good point. I never really thought about that. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna pin that. That's a good one. Uh, uh, last slide can you talk about your logo and how you came up with it because it took me forever to realize that that was for that stood for david nakayama because for the longest time i was like who the hell's dna who is this guy oh that's funny um yeah you know it's it's just the j-lo thing right like your first first initial dot next two letters well it makes sense now right um i i'm I, the reason I did this, I, for the longest time, if you look back at older pieces in my gallery, it's just DN with little dots on the side because Frank Cho was doing it at the time. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, that, I signed my name that way for, for a few years. 
then I, I started thinking about, you know, I, I, I had gone through college. I took some advertising classes. I was literally working in the marketing department of these video games that I was on. I was, I was thinking about literally how to rebrand myself. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at how, you know, my favorite artist signatures are things that, that mean something beyond just like their name. So like Adam Hughes signs, ah, yeah. And yep. Matt Herrera is mad and, you know, Stegman has a, a, a little Stegosaurus thing, <laughs> you know, like when, when you can make a, a, a little joke out of the name, you know, add that extra layer of kind of, you know, come to come full circle, having that extra layer is always good. Um, my name happens to spell out a thing, you know, I'd, I'd be crazy not to, to use that. So right. I embrace that. And, you know, I put it in a sort of extreme perspective to imply some motion and action like isn't this brand exciting (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's that's really great well that's the thing because the the little you know um uh the little gene helix thing really threw me off because i thought this was like a medical thing you know i'm like (laughs) who is this like you know medical person doing this art so yeah I, i was just very curious about how you came up with that uh, so this is some of your packaging work. Um, does it ever get old seeing your work on, on like action figure packaging? Like, you know, this no. is in stores and stuff like that. Oh, it's the best. It's, this is a relatively new gig for me. Um, oh. I, I think I've been doing this, what, a year now, maybe a year and a half, uh, no more than two years. Um, but it's been a really busy and awesome two years. Hasbro has been really great with offering cool assignments all over the place i have I, I, that's by some count by now i think i've got like 30 40 wow figures something like that oh my god um, in individual products now and um it's it's just amazing like a 13 year old me like we were talking about before always wanted to have you know a shelf of cool things that i worked on and this more than anything like uh it's a physical thing you can hold in your hand the art is shown big and bold um the packaging that they make is so awesome like the graphic designers that they have are so good Mm -hmm. um these are beautiful things to have on your shelf as far as i'm concerned um and especially so because they're they're so personal to me um it i i like absolutely i love it and you know you go to target and you see some of your stuff like a yeah. A few weeks ago, it was this strange confluence where multiple lines were all out at the same time. So you had like a line of Age of Apocalypse, Deadpool, Punisher and Squirrel Girl motorcycles, um, and oh, and the uh, the Avengers Game Reverse, all at the same time on the same shelf. I had to take a picture. That was that's never going to happen again. <laughs> oh my gosh! And it was all like all your work, right? Like oh uh, yes, yeah, yes. that is crazy. I would love it to see. It was crazy. Is that is that when when was that? When, when did you say that was? like last month oh okay uh, this is recent oh man did you yeah i'll have to look that did you post that is that is that photo somewhere? no no i thought it was too braggy i just kept oh, it to myself no. <laughs> I, mean, I bet you if you would have posted it and then didn't say anything people would have been like awesome toys like no one would no one would have been like you know <laughs> what is this you know like this is your um it's it's my portfolio um but no that that's awesome that is crazy what i have seen is like the line will come out and uh you know it seems like they make more of certain ones than others so some i've never seen in the store i've never been able to get one uh you know or it just sold out so quickly that that i couldn't i couldn't find copies for myself for example i was trying to complete a set of the uh, deadpool wave that came out recently but couldn't find warpath or maverick um couldn't that's random I know it was random. I wouldn't have thought those would be the ones that would go first, but there you go. They were gone at three different targets around here. I couldn't find it. So I had to order those online. Um, But on the age of apocalypse line in my, my particular target, I don't know about anywhere else in the country, they have a couple extra of the weapon X figures. Now that's very surprising to me because I would think that would be the one people would want the most because it's, it's freaking Wolverine. Right. 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 Um, but either because it's called Weapon X and the word Wolverine doesn't appear on the packaging mm. or maybe kids are like put off by the, you know, the missing hand or what, I don't know what it is, but That's right. there were a That's couple, right. there are a couple extra copies in my local target. So this is very anecdotal. I don't know what the situation is around the country, but, uh, the stuff's fascinating to me, like what's available and what's not, you know, what's, uh, you know, all, all of it is, is, is neat to see. 
I've been experimenting a lot over the years. You know, if you look at the bottom of this image, there's a, you know, almost flat blue pinup, you know, oh, it has yeah, very, yeah. very cartoony flat um, uh, rendering on it. And there are other ones in the same picture that are almost photo real. And in fact, there are a couple yeah. that my, my camera roll thinks are real people and automatically groups into folders that I didn't ask for, but <laughs> that's hilarious. thanks for nothing, Apple. Like uh, <laughs> people you may know, and it's like, no, no. <laughs> no, that's not a real person, Apple. Thank you, though. That's uh, hilarious. <laughs> that's I a compliment, an actually. <laughs> I glad, I'm glad I fooled them. The, uh, you know, when I was in video games, I had to do mm. a lot of advertising art. And, you know, each video game does not have the same art style, of course. So I would be asked in each project to, to change the way I worked each time. Uh, um, okay. So I, I, I came out of video games with like some almost schizophrenia about who I even was as an artist. You know, if you, if you can draw cartoony and realistic and everything in between, then who are you as an artist? You know, is, is a real question that I had. I, I had the ability to draw, you know, I'm not saying the, I'm going to be the best in this ever, but I could draw realistic. I could draw cartoony and anywhere in between. So who am I as an artist? And I, I, I think part of me was longing to get back into comics almost the, the day that I joined the video game industry, because just a few years after I entered, I, I would come home from work and I would uh, <clears throat> start working on, you know, my little side job, which was the cover art stuff. It started mm -hmm. slow and it's gotten faster over time. Um, but all along I was experimenting with style and figuring out what my little DNA stamp even means to people. Yeah. And I think a lot, I think a lot about, you know, if you come to the shelf and you see a cover that says DNA on it, I want you to be able to instantly recognize it. Number one, I want it to stand out from all the other comics that might be next to it. Number two, and I want it to be the best thing that, that I can make it. So where can people follow you online and continue to follow your work? Thank you so much. Um, I am most often on Instagram. I really like the community there. So I, unfortunately, all of my social media is just at my own name. So Twitter, Instagram, uh, even, even Facebook. I, I don't use Facebook too much, to be honest with you, but I'm on there a little bit. Um, so Instagram for sure, at David Nakayama, Twitter at David Nakayama. And for all the artist types out there, I like ArtStation a lot. Um, so again, David Nakayama at ArtStation, um, those are my three faves. So awesome. hope to see you there, guys. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, David. I really appreciate you taking the time. It was a, a huge honor, really fun. Uh, I'd love to do this again sometime yes, soon. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, uh, thanks for being here. Likewise, for me as well, uh, really fun to talk about this stuff. And thank you for going the extra mile to, to make it a more interesting visual experience and to get us into questions that I don't think I've ever gotten to, to tackle on in any interview before. You are winning podcasting, sir, awesome. or, or streaming. That's what I mean. I'll take them both. <laughs> You're killing it. Thank you very much. Honored to be on your show. Thank you so much. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.